Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at authorization and how we can make sure only owner of a specific idea has the ability to edit and delete them. Right now, anyone can delete any idea. Anyone, even if they're not logged in, can post ideas and post comments. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So first step is we actually need to update our migrations. Okay, so we are not actually storing the owner of a comment and an idea. So we need to actually store who created a specific idea in our database. We're not really doing that. And the way we can do that is by adding a foreign ID to both our ideas and comments table. So I just copied what we had for the comments and I create a new I column called user ID. Okay, and I'm following the naming convention we previously discussed, uh, the model name, underline, and then the primary key of that models table, okay, which is ID. And I keep it constrained, so we can only create ideas for users that exist. And then if a user is deleted with cascade on delete, it will automatically delete the ideas. And these happen on, at the database level, not at the Laravel level, okay? And I'll go ahead and I'll copy and paste this on our comments as well for now. So now that we have that, uh, we need to actually run our migrations again. So if you run PHP artisan migrate, obviously nothing will happen because we have already migrated these migrations. So we need to roll them back or undo them and run them again. And Laravel has uh, the functionality for that already. You can type the following command, PHP artisan migrate colon or double colon and then run the command called the refresh and refresh does the following it rolls back the changes and then runs them again now if we run this it will go ahead and completely re uh, refresh everything i don't want to actually delete our users table i like to keep that because i already have a few users so uh, we can tell it to only refresh you know the last two or the last three and the way you do that is basically pass it a step argument and then you tell it how many to re uh, refresh. I only want the last two migrations. So I say dash dash step equals two. And as you can see, it only migrated or refreshed the ideas and the comments table. So now that we have that, we can actually go ahead and store the ID of the current logged in user whenever we are creating a new idea. So the easiest way to do that is obviously we're gonna have a new user ID. So what we can do is go ahead and add it to our validator table because it obviously won't be there. So we can say user ID and then in order to get the ID of the current logged in user, uh, we can use the auth helper. This is a helper function that is always injected in your controller. So you will always have that. And to get the ID, you can just say ID. It's a built-in method, okay? If you want to get the, in the user that is currently logged in, you can say user and it will give you the current logged in users model class and you can get the id that way but the shorthand version is just call id so this way we can set the current uh, logged in user and it will be stored in our database and yeah that that should get the job done I'll also go ahead and do that for our comments so i'll open up the comment controller and for the comments we are not mass assigning them so i'll for now set user ID this way. Later on, we'll refactor this and I say auth ID. And now that we have done that, we should be able to actually go ahead and test it out. So obviously because we refresh our database, we lose our existing ideas. So obviously we should get an error here because we're not logged in, so there is no user, but I'll go ahead and just test it out. And he's telling us uh, user ID doesn't have a default value. And the reason for that is because this odd ID is giving us null. Basically, we, it doesn't, it's not defining, it's not giving us the ID. So uh, we need to make sure we are only able to submit ideas when we are logged in. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. I'll open up our uh, submit idea blade component, I guess, the blade file we have. And I'll go ahead and I'll only show it when we are logged in. Okay, so I'll use the auth directive we learned on the previous episode. And I'll also add a guest option. If you are a guest, I'll go ahead and I'll, maybe I'll show this. I say, log in to share your ideas. I think that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be, maybe we show the form, but 
we don't allow them to click the submit button it's up to you how you want to do it but i think this should get the job done i'll reload and you can see it says login to share your ideas okay so now that we have that let's go ahead and actually log in uh, i think this was one two three four five six seven eight so now that we are logged in we can see the form i'll go ahead and i'll test it i say hello world and we are actually getting an error still hmm interesting so the reason we are getting this is actually we haven't set the user id in our fillable so we need to go ahead and update our idea model and add user id here so if you guys don't know why we are doing that i made a video explaining this about fillables now for our comments we don't really need to do that but i'll add it here just in case so we can later on refactor it but this should get the job done for now we also need content okay so let's go ahead and reload the page and as you can see it actually worked right now so pretty good stuff one more thing i want to do is actually uh, go ahead and show the name of the user that created this idea right now we're shooting mario obviously not correct and to do this easily we can go ahead and use the power of migrations in laravel if you guys remember we did that for our comments when we were displaying our comments we used migrations sorry relationships in laravel uh, forget everything i just said we're going to use relationships not migrations relationships in laravel so we can go ahead and define a new relationship on our idea model as you can see we already have one for our comments so we can go and define a new relationship for our user and so with this type of relationship because it's a one-to-many relationship so if one user can have many ideas and in english terms it will say basically an idea belongs to a user okay and laurel has that in plain english you can say belongs to that's the function name and then belongs to a user so i'll pass the class type and that is how you define the relationships we can also define the opposite of this relationship in our user class and the opposite would be this public function ideas so our user has many ideas and we will define it like this the other side this does has many and then i'll pass idea class okay so this is the opposite of our uh i belongs to relationship what i'll also go ahead and do i'll do the same for our comments so our comment also has the ability to access the user and that's it so now that we have defined our relationships we can easily access the user of an idea in every anywhere we want okay so i'll open up our idea card our idea card blade let me close this so it's a bit cleaner and we can now head now go ahead and replace this with the user that created an idea so we can access the idea and in order to access the user itself we can say user again we, i'm not adding the parentheses that will give us the relationship but we want the user itself and then we can access any of that user's details okay so i want the user name and then at the top we have this uh, for the avatar it's actually an api online api that uh, generates avatars for us so it has a seed i'll put the name for the seed i'll also change the alt here to the name let's do a quick reload and now we can see it's working and for youtube we have a crying emoji nice so now that that is done basically guys we have uh, created a basic setup we do have one more issue and that is if i go ahead and log out we we're actually able to edit our ideas even though we're not logged in that shouldn't be happening okay this page shouldn't even be able to view be viewed right so uh, there are two ways of doing this one way is we go ahead on our controller and we add a check if the user is logged in if they're not we redirect them another way is by using something called middleverse now i'll have a separate episode on middleverse but for now the easiest way to actually do that lot of actually already has a middleware for making sure our routes can only be accessed if a user is logged in and the easiest way to do that is we can go ahead and find our routes for example our idea edit and we can give it a middleware by just calling the middleware method and passing it auth so this will give an auth middleware to our routes 
And what this middleware does is ensures the user is logged in. And if they're not logged in, it redirects them to the login page, okay? So what I'll go ahead and I'll do that for all the routes that should be logged in. Update, destroy, even for posting a comment. And I think that's all of them. Yep, that's all we need. So now if I go ahead and I'll reload and I'll try to access the edit page, it'll redirect me to the login page, okay? So it forces me to log in to edit a comment. Now I do like to do one more thing, which is, well, anyone can actually edit and delete any comment, right? I want to only, I want to make sure only the owner of an idea has the ability to delete. So in order to do that, we can actually go and do that in our controller. So this one is gonna be relatively easy. Uh, again, now that we are logged in, we can actually access the edit page. I'll go ahead and I'll open up our idea controller. And in our store function or our store method, we can add a simple check and we can say, well, not in our store, on our edit, my apologies. So we have our edit, update and delete so i'll go ahead for the delete first we can add a simple check first of all we can get the current logged in user's id and then uh, we can check if it's actually equal to the idea they are trying to delete okay so we can say idea user id so we're basically making sure if the current logged in user is same as the user id of that idea and we have a lot of idea ID. So if they're not the user that created our idea, we just redirect them or we abort the operation. And Laravel has an, a function called abort and it will abort the execution and basically return status code, okay? And you can define the status code here. I say 404, it's for like not found. And then we can basically pass in a message if we want, okay? For now, I'll just read it empty, but we can say, uh, whatever message you want to add. For now, I'll leave it empty and I'll go ahead and I'll copy that and I'll paste it for our update page. And I guess I also do it for our edit page, why not? Because I don't want the person to even be able to see this page if they're not the owner, okay? Obviously right now I'm the owner of this idea. I'm able to both edit and delete it. But if we go ahead and we log out and we create a new user, I say user2, user2 at test.com. And I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, sh I should install the plugin to do that for me easily. Now, if I try to click on the edit, it actually, well, I need to log in as well. I forgot to log in, yeah. User2 at test.com, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that we are actually logged in, if I try to click the edit, it tells me not found, okay? So it's giving a 404, and if I obviously try to delete it, I also get a 404 not found. So it is actually working. We are preventing unauthorized users to delete and edit. Now, I'd like to give you guys an exercise. Go ahead and actually write the logic to not show the edit and the delete button. For the next episode, do that on your own time. So uh, it's gonna be quite repetitive if I do it here, but it's gonna be very easy, similar to what we have done in our controllers. And I think that's all for now, guys. Uh, on the later episodes, we'll cover more stuff, but I think this should be enough for today. Uh, if you guys have any